Hey there, it's Melissa Banaroya, and it is day three of parenting boot camp. You may not be a boot camper just yet, but you are welcome to join us. We have a five day boot camp that's going on right now. We're on day three, and today we're really focused on how we avoid power struggles and we invite our child's cooperation. What can you do? So your child wants to cooperate, that your child listens and does what you ask. And it seems like probably pretty impossible. And this is something I hear every single day from parents. I spent probably an hour yesterday just talking about this particular challenge with a few different parents. So I wanted to share with you one tool or strategy that I think is really powerful, especially when you use it consistently. And that is the use of limited choices. Limited choices, it's not, you know, your child can choose to do whatever they want, they're in control. We are going to be sharing control with them, but they don't have total control, and that's why there's a limit. So in offering limited choices, we are telling what, telling our child what we expect. So maybe you're wanting to get out the door because you gotta get kids to school in the morning. So the limit may be, we are leaving this house in two minutes, and then you can offer your child some choices around what you need them to do to get out the door. So it might be, do you wanna get your backpack first and then get your jacket on? Or you might say, are you gonna carry your backpack out to the car or do you need me to do it? So if the challenge is your child cooperating and wanting to get in the car, we can give them lots of choices. There are unlimited choices that we can give our kids. We can say things like, hey, do you wanna open the door? Or do you want me to open the door? Do you want to listen to my radio station this morning or your music? So there's a lot of choices that don't really have to do with getting out the door that they can make and will lead them to choosing to do what you actually need them to do. In this case, it's just getting out of the house and getting into the car. Um, and ideally, it's with everything they need. So that's why I gave some choices of, hey, do you wanna carry your lunchbox or your backpack? So when they say, I wanna carry my lunchbox, and we've already started that limit, we're getting in the car in two minutes, they are more likely to be cooperative and get in the car when you need them to because they've made a choice to do so. And it might not be, I'm gonna get in the car, but I'm gonna get my lunchbox. And when they do it and they say it out loud, it actually increases the likelihood your child's going to do this thing. So um, in today's bootcamp workout, I sent you some language to use, and I think it's always nice to have some language um, in, in different ways of offering choices. So it's not either you can do this or that, but we can say things like, hey, feel free to, or what would be best for you? So there's lots of different ways, and I gave you some of that language. So what I've asked all of you to do in boot camp today is pick one challenge. Pick one particular situation where it's really, really hard, and maybe this is the challenge you chose to use your empathy response in, and this is really powerful because maybe your child is watching a video or playing with their Legos, and it's something they really, really enjoy doing and they're not gonna wanna stop so they can leave in two minutes. So when we say, you know, hey, we're leaving in two minutes, do you wanna get your backpack or your lunchbox? And they're like, I don't want to, no, I'm not going to school. That's when we go to the empathy. And oh man, sounds like you're having a lot of fun playing with those Legos or oh, you really wanna finish that video before they leave. And we're leaving in two minutes. So you can do this or that, and then you can also let them know that, hey, no problem, yes, you can watch that video. We'll watch the rest of it when we get home. So it's not, no, you're not gonna watch it. Um, I think yes is a much more powerful word and will avoid power struggle. So today was really just one tiny tool, one really powerful tool on how we get our children to cooperate and do so in a way that we don't expend a lot of energy, that we're not repeating ourselves. Because I hear that over and over again, like I'm constantly repeating myself. And the only time my child responds is when I yell or I threaten. And who likes 
getting to that point. We don't need to get to that point. So I'm sharing this one idea with you today. I do want to let you know that if this is interesting to you, these tools and these strategies, I'm going to be launching a free webinar in the next week and a half. So please be on the lookout for that. And maybe, you know what, I might just um, include a link below in case you are interested in that um, webinar so you can get more information. So today, you're not only going to pick your situation and brainstorm some choices you can use. So ideally, we're gonna do this before the situation happens. You know what reoccurs in your home every day. So pick one of those moments, those scenarios, those challenges, and then I want you to brainstorm. And I gave you about four or five different ways to offer choices. I want you to come up with a minimum of four or five choices that you can give your child before things go badly. So ideally, we use choices all day long, and I'm saying choices, but I mean limited choices all day long. So that way our child feels like they have control because when we don't give them some say in how things go, they are going to look for control in other places. And that's when kids use negative behaviors to rein in some control and feeling some sense of power. If we are holding our power over them, they're not gonna wanna cooperate. So it's really amazing to give them some of this power. And most times it's around things we don't even care, right? Like if it's the backpack or the lunchbox, who cares? Ideally, I wanna get them in the car so we can get out of here and we're not late again, right? So there's lots of ways that we can give choices leading up to a challenge. Now, there may be moments when things escalate and that's also a great time to use a limited choice, but we don't wanna get there. So we use them all day long around things that don't even matter. And it's not even the challenging scenario, things that like go easily. We want to use these limited choices because not only will our children feel more powerful and in control of how things go but we'll just get better at using it because it becomes a habit so this needs to become a new way of making requests of your child and without practice it's it's not gonna it's not gonna come natural so the more that you practice the easier it's gonna be to be consistent and when your child doesn't choose or they don't want to choose no problem, you just choose for them. Not a big deal, and then you move on, and maybe you give them another set of choices, or maybe they're upset about it, and you empathize, and you remind them that they can choose again tomorrow, or they can choose a different thing, or here's another set of choices around something else. But the more that you're consistent, the more that you end up actually making choices for them, the more likely they're gonna start making choices for themselves. Because if you end up having to get in that situation where you're making the choices for your child, they're not gonna like it. They're gonna realize that they like it better when they get to choose. So when you do that, it's gonna reinforce that the next time they're gonna make a choice. All right, so I spent enough time talking about this today. I wanna to remind you that in addition to this new practice, in addition to this new experiment that you're going to try today, you are also focused on day one practices. And day one is implementing that one tiny self-care piece. Because if you're not fueled, if you don't have the patience and the calm to think, you're not gonna be able to remember to be empathetic or offer choices. So making sure that you are on the priority list today, that you come first. And not that your, prior, you know, your needs come before everybody else's, but your needs are addressed as well. Everybody does not take precedent over you. You get to be on the list. Your family needs you to take care of yourself and do these things for you. You may feel like, oh, this is selfish. It's taking away from my kids and it's actually not. It's more of a selfless act. So self-care, if I didn't drill that in enough, that's really, really important. We also talked yesterday about connecting before we correct or redirect. And we talked about using a one-liner, an empathetic statement as a way of connecting to your child to let them know, I hear you, I see you. And also as a reminder or a cue to you to gut check your emotional state and so soothe, calm down, or take a break if you need one because otherwise you're not gonna be effective. You're probably gonna say or do something that just doesn't feel good or you might regret or feel guilty about. Um, so it reminds 
commands you to gut check your emotional state and acknowledging that your emotional state is going to influence your child's emotional state. So even if they are escalated, if you are calm, if you are able to take a deep breath, they're going to start matching that state as well because emotions are contagious. And it is also a reminder of this empathetic statement to stop talking so much because our tendency as parents is to remind, repeat, reinforce, negotiate, like all of these things just depletes you. So like, let's leave that at the curb and let's focus on just keeping it simple being present, being calm, and connecting with our child. It feels better when there's a connection. Really, that's what your child wants from you. They want to feel connected to you. All right, so we've got three practices so far this week. It's a lot to take on, and like I said yesterday, if there's just one thing that resonates with you, if there's one thing that you want to focus on, pick that one thing and ignore everything else. I'm just providing that buffet of ideas, and you get to pick and choose what works for you, your child, and your family. All right, so we've got plenty to practice here today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post in the comments below. This is being aired on the Child Proof Parenting Facebook page. It's going to be shared now into our private parenting bootcamp. So please be sure if you're in either of those spaces to post your questions. I'll be checking in and answering questions there. And I'll also be answering questions tomorrow on our Facebook Live. So if there are any questions that come up in this process, please don't hesitate to reach out because I'll answer it live for you here or you and I can chat over Facebook Live, or I'll answer it for you in our group. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.